Hi, welcome to the Sigma Path. In this episode, we're going to try another repair. This is an Amtec Jofra series temperature controller. It's actually a pretty interesting device. It has a little cavity here at the top, and you can drop in something in there, and you can control the temperature of that cavity very precisely with a built-in temperature controller. Now, because it uses Peltier coolers, it can go both above and below ambient. So you can go down to minus 40 degrees Celsius, and I think up to 180 degrees Celsius as well. So that's pretty useful. You can do temperature cycles and characterize things like resistors and devices and so on. I actually was visiting Ilya at XDev and he had one of these and every time I visit him he ends up costing me something so I had to go and buy one on eBay. This is actually a non-functional unit. They're not that easy to find but I'll show you what it does when I turn it on. Okay let's go and turn it on. So it does turn on fine and I hear a little fan firmware was from 2009 and you can set the temperature you can see here is minus 25 degrees what it is was set for last time and is measuring the internal temperature of the cavity correctly 21.2 celsius seems about correct if i press that enter you can see i hear it it's, there's a bit of clicking inside but then nothing happens basically the temperature doesn't change the fans are now running a lot harder but clearly nothing's going on so either the drivers of the peltier are dead or something else is going on i can increase the temperature and the fan behavior actually does change if I go to above ambient. So let's go up a little bit more and see what happens. Let's say if I wanted to go hotter, let's say you know, 57 degrees. Click again, the fan changed. It did a couple of clicks and a couple of trials. Yeah, nothing. So it always stays at around room temperature. So we have to open it up. It actually is pretty loose and I think it's missing a few screws. So I think someone must have opened it and tried to repair it at some point. It also came with these little capsules and a few of them with different diameters, like so. And you can drop this in here, I guess for melting something or temperature cycling something. And he has a little funky tool that looks like this to grab them once they're in there. So it's been clearly used a lot and it came from Europe, so I had to change the voltage input. But something's going on. Let's take it apart. Well, I managed to get everything out of the chassis and reassemble it here on the table. Now, one thing I did notice is that I think this was already disconnected inside, although I could have done it while I was trying to pull things apart because I wasn't sure how it disassembles. The brain of this whole thing is actually in the display. So everything is connected there, and the cable should go in here, which is labeled RTD. So it must be the thermistors. Everything else is not unusual. You have some Peltier electric elements in here. You have the drivers for it. You monitor the temperature. It's a closed-loop system. So nothing strange going on over there. So we should be able to turn it on like this. It's very dirty also, and the cables and everything, they're all exposed. They didn't do a really good job assembling it. So I'm going to fix all that anyway, and then we're going to turn it on. So the people who assembled this absolutely loved electric tape. It was everywhere and it was going bad, even in the legs of this fan. So I just replaced them with nice plastic plugs. I redid all the cabling and it behaves exactly the same. So that's in a way a good sign because it means that that cable I thought was disconnected wasn't actually disconnected and it was just the way it is. So you go, you can turn it back on and it will be exactly the same. It's set to minus 7.6 and if I press that, you can see that it basically does the same thing. It starts going, but this temperature essentially never changes. Now we can do some really quick tests. We can check to see if the Peltier is getting power because if it's not, it could be a problem of the relay and the MOSFET that drives it. So here are the two cables. We should be able to make some voltage measurements as it is running right now. So let's see what I get. Let's keep the polarity. I'm going to go black on black, red on red, 21 volts. So that's pretty good. Okay, so it's trying to drive the Peltier, which is good. Now I could do a quick test. I can actually change the temperature to go above ambient, right? So as soon as you go above ambient, what will happen is that it's going to have to flip the polarity of the actual Peltier in order to change the direction of the flow of heat. So that should change the polarity of this as well. Let's see if it does that. There you go, 43 degrees. Press that. Let's go back and measure again. So now it should be the other way around. And look at that, minus 21. So it is doing exactly correctly. So it's applying the voltages, but somehow the Peltier is not activated. Let's see if we can do a few other measurements. So check this out. I have it active again. If I measure the voltage being applied over here, we're getting our minus 21. But if I measure across the Peltier, I get nothing. So the voltage is just simply not arriving at the Peltier elements. So the problem could just be in this tiny little board, which is all passive. So we should take a closer look at it. So I think I may have found the problem. These two Peltiers are actually in series, and this is quite common. Peltier coolers are often put in series in applications where you want to apply a larger voltage and you just share the current between them. Now if I measure the resistance of one of them, this one on the left here, we're looking at about 33 ohms or so, and this changes depending on the temperature and so on because it is a thermoelectric device. Now on the other side, if I measure it, the other one, 
what I get is basically this is just my fingers now. So yeah, the other one seems to be open. So naturally, when you apply voltage across it, you're getting no current and you're getting no effect. So unfortunately, one of the pelchias seems to be damaged or dead. But this is a really difficult thing to open because it's all glued together. But nonetheless, we should try and see if we can get to that component. Well, luckily, it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought to get to this element. So this is a dead one, so we should be able to now remove it and let's see if we can find a replacement. All right, I actually found a replacement in my box of mysteries and it's the same size, these are standard, and I verified the polarity with the working one on the other side. And they should be roughly the same power handling, so hopefully everything would work out. Put some more thermal paste on the top of this and then seal it back up. There is silicone all around this, and that's just for moisture ingress because this thing can get obviously quite cold if you're heating the inter internal part of this, the outside will get colder of course. So we're going to have to apply some of that to make sure it's properly sealed. Okay, so here we're getting back together again. Let's turn it on. Hopefully nothing will explode. Okay, it's doing the same thing as before. So here it is, zero degrees. Now the lab is about 20 degrees Celsius right now. It's the next morning. Let's go and turn it on and let's see what happens. And let's see. Ah, look at that. It's going down. There you go. That's what we were hoping to see. So it's actually working. It's cooling. Now whether it's going to reach the extreme temperatures, we can try out. But it looks like that it is actually now back to be functional with the new Peltier cooler. All right, so let me stop it here so it doesn't cool down too much. It's going to start condensate on the inside. So let's put it all back together, clean it up, and then do some experiments. All right, everything's back together. I have now a thermocouple in there and there's a little piece of insulation I put on top of it and I put one of the small inserts in there. So there's going to be a difference between these two because I think this does need a bit of calibration. There's about 0.4 degrees Celsius difference between them. So let's go up in temperature first, 75 degree, and let's see what happens. Let me click that. I think this is going to internally go up a lot faster because the thermocouple, the thermistor is much closer to the chamber and it's going to take a while before this one catches up to it, especially because there is an insert in there. Here we go. So this caught up to the temperature. Now it says 10 minutes. This is for everything to stabilize because they're taking into account that there is additional mass in there away from the thermistor. And you can see this one slowly catching up to it. So we're going to leave it for about 10 minutes and then we can compare the difference between these two. Okay, everything's stabilized now, and there's an entire one degree difference between these two. This thing most likely needs to be calibrated, and there's a calibration procedure that we can follow, but it is functional, and the check mark means that from the instrument's point of view, everything is stabilized. So that's great. Now we have to go all the way the other way. This thing should be able to go down to minus 17 degrees Celsius, so let's put it to minus 20 and see if we can get it as cold as possible. Here we go. It's going to enjoy that, going across such a big temperature difference. So it's flipping everything. Here you go. It's cooling now. So it's almost stabilized now. There's still a difference between these two temperatures and it's been hovering at minus 16.8 for some time. I think it probably can hit minus 17 if it were a little bit colder here in the lab and if we didn't have this additional leakage here at the top. But at minus 17, it probably has no lift power at all. So if you put something in that generates thermal energy, it's just not going to be able to keep up with it. But it's pretty good. It's got a fairly wide dynamic range of temperature that we should be able to do experiments with. You may also be wondering what these switch ports in the front are for and you can use that to calibrate and to measure thermostats. So if you have a thermostat in there, you can fit the thermostat back in here and you can find out the exact trigger point, temperature trigger point of a thermostat by creating a loop within this. And then the instrument will then tell you what that was and you can run repeated measurements and get some statistical data to characterize and calibrate thermostats. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to stop this video here. I have some ideas of the stuff we can put in there and measure the PPM drift across temperature. We can put oscillators in there, resistors in there, and a whole bunch of different experiments can certainly be done. But let me know what you think in the comment section, what kind of stuff you'd like to see. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.